Hey guys, Alex here, On Point Leather. Today I'm gonna to teach you guys how to make a dog leash, uh, one just like this. This is a long strip of latigo, about an inch wide. It has three rivets and a swivel snap, I believe. Super easy design. This incorporates a traffic handle that I call. It's a forward grip to keep your dog close to your body if for whatever reason you need to do that, or whether you're amongst people, other animals, walk on the side of the road and then just a, a standard hand loop at the end. Uh, it's really easy to do. It's a strong, sturdy, and effective leash, and it is a great addition to the dog, or excuse me, it is a great addition to the dog collars that we made in the last video. So stay tuned, I'll show you how to do it. So when you're making these leashes, there's no set rule as to how long anything needs to be. Uh, obviously, if you're making it for somebody, go off of their requests and measurements. But the leash that I have that I use for my dog, this one, is right at 56 inches long, the leather. Uh, the swivel snap goes out a little bit further than that. But I just put the handle at a, a size that felt comfortable for my hand. I'm just going to match it up with this and use it as an idea. Uh, there's no science to this other than make it comfortable to you or do whatever, whoever's paying you to do this, do what they want. So I'm gonna round off these ends here. I don't like the way that looked. So I'm gonna do it again. Okay, that's better. And if I'm just gonna copy this leash, then right about there is how long I would have my far end handle. <clears throat> Flip this over so I don't miss the back side. All right, that part's done. Okay, now for the traffic handle end of the leash. So the way I have it configured is the way it folds up, if it'll focus on that. The way this leather comes in and butts up here, it just makes a solid place for the swivel snap not to slide too far. It just kind of seats it all in at the in there. And then you have this loop here, and then I have it riveted up here at the top, so that way this doesn't come and flop around. Pretty simple. And I just have the leash lined up, the handles butted down on this end. Don't forget to round off this. That looks good. We just slide this on here. Bring it right up to our example leash that we're using. And then I just fold this end all the way up tight against the swivel snap there. So bring it up nice and tight. And then I have I can see a rivet right there and that'll hold sturdy. Give you a loop here. And if you don't rivet it, again, this will just flop. And that actually gets pretty annoying. The first time I made this leash, I did not rivet that. And it flopped around while I was walking. I came home, put a rivet right there. Huge upgrade to the pattern. So first step, now that we have this seated up there as tight as we wanna go is Put a hole through those three layers, which I don't know if the punch is going to be long enough for that. It 
It was. Okay. Great punches. Then I'm going to put a rivet here just so the placeholder so everything stays where it should. Fold this down. Kind of pinch the leather down tight so I know where it's going to end up at. And I'm going to put a hole right in the center here. And now literally all we have to do is seat the rivets and this leash is finished. Okay, and now to set these rivets, I apologize in advance for how this is going to shake the camera. There's some sharp edges here that just aren't wanting to smooth out, so you just got to work it. And that did it. So the first rivet's now set. Just need to do this one and then the last one. This one's going to be just a little tricky to, to do only because there's a piece of leather in the way, but you just bend it out of the way. It's, it's really not a big deal. Just something to keep an eye on. If you buy rivets from Weaver, they sort the rivets and the washers. And if you buy them from Buckle Guy, they do not. So, just something to be aware of. One of these days I'll have to take the time to go through and sort out all my washers because every time I go to grab them it takes me a couple seconds that I don't like spending. Again, I like to get a multifaceted bite on my rivet. And what I mean by that is I like to cut it halfway through, spin the nippers, cut it again. I think it helps begin the doming process of this sh sharp piece that you're gonna have to smooth over. I don't know if it makes a huge difference. I've done it both ways, but I don't think it hurts. I always feel for smoothness. And then I always dome these rivets. The reason I'm using copper rivets and not brass, aside from the fact that I don't think copper and brass look bad together, is because brass rivets are really hard to work with and they don't like to dome over very easily. It's the only reason. Copper rivets are easier.
all domed over. Looks pretty. The traffic handle is now complete. And now for the other handle that you actually hold on to when you're walking. One thing I did off camera is I used my heat imprinter to put my little pointing dog, puppy dog brand on the leash. So these rivet setters, domers, and the set is from Buckle Guy. And I like it, it's a really nice set, but the piece that punches the rivet onto the post, or the, the washer onto the post, I'm not sure all the terminology, one of them is called a burr. It's so precise that if there's a abnormality in the rivet post, when you pound this on there, it is now stuck. So this is stuck on here, and I am going to have to try and unstuck it. And it certainly doesn't want to just pull off. Oh, maybe it does. Ugh. So that was really hard to do. Uh, I did get it. You can see where it's kind of smoothed off some of the copper so just be aware that that's something that can happen to you and sometimes it's just stuck you can get the nippers in there maybe and cut it off but then you have the post stuck inside this hole and this is now useless if that happens so uh, i've had to get creative before when i wasn't able to just rip it off of there Well, I was going to multifacet that one, but I punched through it on accident. So, if the camera will pick it up, there is a sharp peak on each side where this, I think this is the burr, is being domed over and smoothed and that is what I'm talking about where if you did a multi-facet snip on this post it smooths out easier because everything's smooth there's nothing sharp but there's a where the facet came down so so steep there on that peak it doesn't want to smooth over and I'm going to have to work it quite a bit it's just a little bit easier if you do it Two, two cuts if you turn your nippers. I got it. It's all smoothed over. Obviously it can be done, but it took more work than the other rivets did. Now to dome it. Just so you guys get a good idea of exactly the difference in detail that makes. And also, everything's nice and pretty on this side now. I'm going to dome it and that's going to change. So you can see the domed rivet at this point just looks better. And now my, my pretty round post here is no longer. I flattened it out. So I will go back and hit it again. But I don't know that it's going to allow me to fix that back to where it was. It's not going to, however, nothing sharp, everything's smooth. Dome side still looks good. 
I'm gonna call this done. Okay guys, so it's done. Uh, this is the leash now. I don't know, you guys watch me make it, here it is. Real easy, real easy project to do. I don't know how long this video t is gonna end up being, but it feels like it took me less than 30 minutes to make the leash. And that's because I was setting up the camera and trying to redo shots and things like that. So it's super simple. Uh, I used a Latigo. I believe this leather's from Mexico. I was told it was a Herman Oak Latigo when I bought it and then I called back and it wasn't. So I think this is a Mexican Latigo. It's good leather. Uh, they use it in horse tack. That's good enough for a dog leash. It, uh, it holds up. I've walked my dog in the rain and it's gotten muddy and it, it holds up. It's very sturdy, very strong. I don't burnish the edges of these leashes and collars. I explained this in the collar video, but this is a utility piece that I'm, well, I'm not gonna use this one, but I know it's going to see use and the burnish edge is gonna fall right apart and this Latigo doesn't burnish very well. It takes a long time to get a very mediocre result in burnishing, I'm just not gonna do it. If somebody wanted me to do it, I would, but I'm not going to on this one because I haven't been asked to do it. Uh, that's, that's it, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Very simple project. Uh, go make your dogs a leash, you'll like it. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one, thanks, bye.